What's up, convoy? Today I'm going to show you guys how to operate a reefer. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Right now I'm here at uh, one of KMB's drop yards I'm in Kansas City, Kansas. And as you can see, got a few trucks, a couple trucks, a few trailers. We just kind of rent the space from this company called Supervan. And uh, I'm here finishing up a reset. I'll be getting out of here a little bit later. But let's get on to the reefers. First thing I do, like uh, when I came here uh, the other day, I dropped the loaded trailer off. There were no empties, so actually I left. But I came back this morning, found an empty trailer. I hooked up to it. And uh, you got a pre-trip that... Uh, the reefer, just like a van, you know, like a, any any other trailer, lights, brakes, tires, stuff like that. And then with the reefer, you got to do a couple other things, which is uh, the actual reefer motor itself. I always start them up. It's real easy to start these things. Just flip that switch up and just wait for it to turn on. Sometimes they take a little while. Next thing I want to pay attention to my uh, reefer fuel in case you guys didn't know that's how you check the fuel on a reefer is the tank the majority of reefers uh, have 50 gallon tanks and uh, they usually last a while they kind of differ it depends on the load you know if you got a real uh, really deep freeze load on uh, continuous run it means because there's two types of uh, ways to ref have refrigerated load or how to keep it cool is on continuous run. You, a lot of that stuff is like produce and ice cream, really deep frozen stuff. And you have your normal setting, which is start and stop, which basically means you set it to a, uh, whatever temperature you need that trailer to be at. And the, the, the actual, the, the reefer motor doesn't continuously run. When it gets to its uh, pre, pre assigned point uh, temperature, the engine uh, shuts off and it kind of does nothing. And then it kind of monitors the, the temperature in the trailer. And once it creeps up a little bit, then the motor kicks back on, keeping it at that temperature. I don't know if you guys heard that, but the reefer motor just kicked on. But after I do that, flip the switch up, check the fuel, I come to the back, open up the door, look inside of it. Always, first thing I want to pay attention to is the, uh, the cleanliness. See, this has got a little bit of stuff here, no big deal. But still, I'm gonna have it washed out before uh, I get to the next spot. And then this here, that tarp looking thing, it's called the chute. Always wanna look at that because a lot of places won't load you. If that's torn or hanging or whatever, um, they won't even load you up. They'll tell you to get it fixed. Which are no big deal to get them fixed, but that can be really annoying. Uh, most of the times they get damaged by the fork trucks coming on and off the truck. You know, and they don't say nothing usually. They'll rip them down totally or halfway and they just, they won't even mention it to you. So that kind of sucks. Another thing is uh, the floors of the reefers, you see they're all slotted. That's because the chute spits out air up here out this way, hits the doors and goes underneath the freight in these channels to keep a good circulation to make sure that the entire load stays at temp. So, check for those things and you know you're good. But, uh, we are constantly getting uh, uh, trailer washouts even, even that condition, I mean, I know a lot of people uh, pulling dry van think that's clean, but, um, you know, we're dealing with food, so we, we, tr we don't want cross-contamination and stuff, especially if a little bit of product uh, from your last load hit the floor, and uh, it's been sitting in the, in the reefer all day, turned off, it gets hot, and starts uh, growing bacteria, and it's just going to get real bad, and if it gets on another product on your next load, then you get making people sick, so... That's why we're constantly getting trailer washouts. 
and a lot of a lot of places are uh, pretty anal about their trailers too. If, uh, if I pull in there just like that, you guys saw the little bit of wood and stuff. There's a lot of places that would refuse to load me even because of that. They tell me they'd refuse me, and I'd have to go get a uh, trailer washout, which is annoying as hell. Been there, done that too many times. I started with Warner. That happened to me all the time. Tried to get away with stuff, but couldn't do it. So let's go back up here to the reefer unit itself. And I'll show you how to set temperature and stuff with these. Alright, whatever load was in here last was set at negative 10. Now you can just move it around like this, up and down buttons at wherever you want it. Or a lot of companies have uh, what's called IntelliSense. Like, uh, I'm going to a Walmart and the bill of lading for them says 24 26. See, it says Walmart case ready. Lettuce, produce. You can just pick whatever one of those you want. Sit down. And then you're set. And that's pretty much all we got to worry about pulling reefer. You know, we, we always got to monitor the, uh, the trailer. It's not like uh, if we pick up a load. You know, it's going 1,000 miles away. Pretty much every single time I get in and out of that truck, I pay attention to the uh, temperature. Because uh, things happen, and uh, you know, if uh, something something goes wrong with the reefer itself, and you got a frozen load, and you don't pay attention, and you pull halfway across the country, and it's thawed out, that's a refused load. That costs a lot of money to the company. It pisses off uh, shippers and receivers. You just want to pay attention. If something does happen, you want to catch it before you destroy a load, you know, which could be, you know, several hundred thousand dollars or more. So you don't want to do that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with the reefer. I mean, it's not too difficult. You just got to pay attention. It's common sense. You know, there's certain things, you know, like uh, if you're pulling produce, you don't want it to go beneath 32 degrees because that's freezing. You don't want to freeze stuff that's not supposed to be frozen. You don't want to thaw things out that's supposed to be frozen. So just, just things like that you really just want to pay attention to. Um, but like I said, it's really easy. You just saw me. That's pretty much all I do with the uh, the control unit itself. Set the temperature, keep an eye on it, and go. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So pretty simple. You know, that's just in case you guys uh, didn't know, never, never uh, experienced anything about a reefer. Uh, do not. Uh, I know some of you guys ask me uh, what what, uh, what it takes to pull a reefer. And some of you guys, I hear a lot actually in truck stops and stuff that people don't want to deal with a reefer. It's too difficult. There's nothing difficult about it. There's nothing nothing crazy hard or you know. I don't know. You pull reefers, you are probably going to drive a lot at nighttime. You know, like I said, here it can be, it's about 50-50. You know, I prefer nights anyway, so I got no problem with it, but... Yeah, it's just the nature of the beast pulling reefer. You drive a lot of nights, got it, especially if you're uh, pulling a lot of meat like I do. You know, Tyson's and whatever. Just uh, pretty much meat. They kill in the day and ship at night, so that's how it works. You know, in grocery warehouses, too, they, they always have goofy appointment times. They always want you there at 3.15 a.m. or... 2.20 in the morning or whatever, so yeah, I mean, if you, want, if you guys want to pull a reefer interested in it, uh, don't uh, don't let operation of the reefer itself uh, deter you from doing so, because it's super simple, super easy. Like I said, just pay attention. Always match the uh, the temperature on the reefer to your bill of lading. That's the most important thing, is when you get to a shipper, receiver, sometimes when you get to a shipper, they want your trailer pre-cooled. If the freight go out, goes on there and it's supposed to be at 32 degrees, you back in that door, even with the empty trailer, sometimes they want that trailer set inside the 32. And also, when you get to a receiver, those uh, the, the, the temperature on the reefer inside, the freight inside the trailer needs to be set within a couple of degrees to, uh, to the bill of lading temperature. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, it's really easy. It's not a big deal. You know, nothing to be worried about. But I think that's it. I think I'm going to get this uploaded for you guys and uh, I got a load tonight I got to pick up at 2 a.m. from a Tyson uh, just uh, an old lathe of Kansas and pull it over to Illinois somewhere so yeah I think uh, that's it until next time guys 
Uh, stay tuned. Uh, remember, Tuesdays and Sundays, I'm uploading videos from now and on. So stay tuned for that. And also, I want you guys to go check out a couple of uh, new trucker YouTubers, uh, a couple friends of mine. Uh, one of them, his name is Jeff. His uh, YouTube name is Bring Jeff the Horizon. I'll leave a link to his page down in the description. And also, uh, JVB Trucker One. He uh, he's owner operator, pulls with long haul trucking. Just started his YouTube channel, and he's actually got a pretty sweet ass. Uh, Peterbilt 379, all kinds of chrome and chicken lights, custom paint. So he's gonna get some of uh, some of his truck and talk about it a little bit for you guys. I'll leave a link to him in the description, uh, along with, along with Jeff. And also Jeff works for KNB. He uh, came over like a week ago. So definitely go check those guys out and uh, check out YTTrucking.com as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, just look around the website. Got some good stuff. Got all your favorite trucker YouTubers on there. So, but anyways, guys, I think that's it. And uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Like I said, if you got questions, for send them in the, the, the uh, send them to me via text, send them to me in the email, send them to me in the comments, whatever. If you got any questions you want me to answer on YouTube, definitely shoot me your questions. So I'll be picking one of those questions to answer on Tuesday videos. So that's it. I think, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. All right, until next time, run hard and get paid.